Hi everybody. I have my cat. Hopefully he'll be quiet. He sits in my lap. He always likes to make a cameo appearance in my videos. Um, I have my Paul Rubin sketchbook because I want to do a little painting using these paints. These are Liquitex Artist Watercolors. It's the value series. If you've never seen these before, it's because they're from 1998 and they don't make them anymore. I found them buried in a section of my craft supplies that I don't really use. I don't really check them out very often. I usually use my more high-end art supplies at this point. Somehow these have managed to stay with me through countless moves, apartments, houses. I, I gotta be honest, I am shocked. I have them. I don't it's like they've just materialized out of thin air. But I do remember them, and it does say 1998 right here on the package. So holy cow, I used these 25 years ago when I was probably like 15 or something. Um, my art teacher in high school was awesome. She always wanted us to go home and practice painting and drawing and all that kind of thing. So she made sure everybody in the drawing and painting class had a block of watercolor paper and a set of watercolors that we could take home and use. So here they are. I'll open them up, we can take a look at them. So upon first glance, they actually don't look too bad compared to other cheap watercolor sets that are available at Michael's and Joann's and that kind of thing. These don't look too chalky. I mean, they look a little chalky, but they don't look too bad. They're not like those, I don't even know what company they are, but I always see them at Michael's. They have like that clear top and just looking at them, they have that really hot pink color and it looks like it was just mixed with a chalkboard chalk. It, they just look like horrible paints. Maybe they're not, maybe they're fine. I've never used them. I just don't think I would waste my money on them. These, however, don't look too bad. So I thought we could swatch them out on some... In, in my swatch book and then do a little painting in here to see if they're any good and to see if I should keep these and use them again. Maybe I could compare them to some new student grade watercolors, like the cheap ones. Again, like this were probably only two, three dollars. So are they, are they worth using? We'll find out together. I'll see you soon. First thing I'm going to do to give these paints a shot is to put a little water in each. Actually, you know what? Do I have? I'm gonna spray these down. Give them a shot of being rewettable. And I think I'm going to try to do this in a sort of rainbow order if I can. So we've got this, what looks like a cool red magenta type color. Okay. It's a little muddy, but I'm wondering if that's because I clearly have used these and there's some contamination. See if I can dig in there and get it. Oh man, I was excited. I thought maybe these would actually be nice. I mean, they're not horrible for what they are. Probably like $2 paints or something. This looks like Maybe an orangey red. Ooh, that's actually not bad. <clears throat> Maybe this one. It seems like they go diagonally in a rainbow type order. This one's contaminated, so let's see if I can get in there a little bit. That's 
actually a pretty color. I'm actually surprised by some of these. Other than this red and this orange, they're not as, I don't know, they're not too bad. I'll bring that down a little further so we can start blending in this green. And they're not the most pigmented paints in the world. Oh, that's pretty. This looks more like it's going to be an ultramarine blue. So even though they're generally going diagonally in a color pattern, I think I'm going to skip a spot. Yeah, because that's more of a warm blue. I think I'll put this color in between. Yeah. This is actually motivating me to paint a picture with these colors. And this blue, oh, that's a purple. It looks so dark in the pan that I'm actually a little disappointed that it's not darker on the paper. Maybe this one. Nope. Oh, that's disappointing. I was hoping it was going to be very vibrant. These blues and greens look super vibrant, so. Let's get some brown. I'm not going to swatch the white, but I am going to try to clean it up a little bit. And let's see how dark the black is. No, oh, it's pretty dark. Okay. Let's try some color mixing, real color mixing. Got this red. I'm very disappointed with this red. It's the only one I think that really truly disappoints me. <clears throat> I'd probably make a good orange with it though. Yeah, it's actually not a bad orange right there and then I would use this see if I can get a better purple than one of those mm, let's do this one. Ooh, that's actually a very pretty purple it's more vibrant than this one pretty and let's see if I can actually make a better red by mixing this with this I 
that's just no pigment on this. Really taking my poor little brush in there. I mean, it's definitely better than that one. Okay, so looking at this, if I were to paint a picture, I would want to make sure the colors have heavily leaned in this range. These blues and purples are very pretty. That's not bad. I would just try to find a picture that doesn't have a true red in it. Although, let me see if I can mix this and this. It's definitely better than that red. It's a little bit more glowy. As glowy's, I think, 1998 student watercolor paints could possibly get. I really like that purple. Okay, so I'm going to go look for a reference photo so I can sketch something out quick and actually paint something with my, what did I say, 24-year-old paints? Yeah, I'll be right back. Okay, I don't know what happened. I thought I was recording and I went to go stop the recording and I realized I did not in fact record 95% of this painting. Um, that's okay, I guess. I am actually very pleasantly surprised. I'm not happy with this tape. I don't know what's been going on with it. It's the tape I've always used and I can't get it off this paper. And there we go. Oop, there we go. So I just did a quick little sketch in my Paul Rubens watercolor book. I didn't want to use really good watercolor paper for these cheap paints. I figured I'd throw it in a sketchbook. It's not too bad. Little Winterland scene. Uh, I got the reference photo from unsplash.com. I'm pretty impressed with these little paints. I think I'll probably use them in this sketch pad a little bit more. It's pretty cool. So these 25, 24, 25 year old paints can still paint. So I'm back with my little painting. I gotta say, I'm actually really impressed. I didn't think I was going to be able to get some of these really dark tones, uh, especially when I was swatching out the paints. I, I was thinking to myself, there's no way they're going to get as dark as I need them to be to get some depth, but they did. Do I think I'd be able to paint a super realistic, very detailed painting with them? I think I'd have to play with them a little bit more first. I'm not sure. I don't know. I mean, it's very possible. They, there's some areas where the paint actually blended pretty well and really had like a good a good flow, like a decent watercolor. So whatever binding they used, it's a pretty good binding. Um, I don't know if I would, would use them for a super detailed painting, especially because I would have to do it in a sketchbook because there's no way these paints are light fast. I mean, I, I would never be able to use them on a nice big sheet of Arches paper and hang it up on the wall because my guess is in six months uh, it would be faded. So I'm going to have to stick to my small little sketchbook so I probably won't be able to do anything too detailed with them. But I'm definitely going to keep them. Um, 
They're super lightweight. The fact that they have a palette built into the top is great. I can throw them into my backpack with a couple of brushes, maybe um, maybe a little bottle of, of water or something. And I've got tons of mixing area. So would I keep this as a travel palette to use in my sketchbook? 100%. I'm actually kind of bummed that these aren't made anymore. So maybe what I'll do is I'll try some other student grade watercolor paints that are still being you know, produced. Maybe I think Prang might make a set and I'll compare them to this and see if they're just as good because why spend a ton of money on paints for a sketchbook? I don't, especially if they're gonna work okay. Um, I like saving money. They're not gonna fade in a sketchbook, I don't think. They're not exposed to light. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep using them. So let me know if you would like to see other videos that might use old art supplies. I believe I have a set of colored pencils. It's a small set, it might be eight or 12 pencils. Again, they're buried in that same little craft area. Um, they're colored pencils that were traditionally used to shade in vintage photographs, like black and white photographs. So those pencils have to be pretty old. The packaging looks like it could be from the 60s or 70s, I'm not sure, I'd have to look again. But if you want to see me try out those pencils, let me know, it might make a, a, an interesting video. I definitely have tons of old photographs of people, I don't know who they are, just, you know, boxes of photographs I inherited from my grandparents, and I don't know who these some of the people are, so I have no problem coloring them in and playing around with those pencils. So that might be fun. Let me know if it's something you're interested in. Let me know if you want, to see more videos using just really, really basic art supplies. I think it's fun. It makes art a little bit more approachable for people that, you know, don't have a lot of money to invest in high-end products, especially when they're pretty decent. I mean, these are great. I would recommend these if you can get your hands on them. I mean, I don't know if you will be, but yeah, we'll try out the praying ones and see if they're close. So thank you for watching. I'm hoping you enjoyed this video and I'll see you soon. Thanks.